Hello everyone, my name is Lad, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Astrolabe Diagnostics and um, I would like to show you an Astrolabe analysis uh, of this latest data set that was released from the Mark Davis group. Um, so this paper, um, Increased Tissue Differentiation in Bangladeshi Compared to American Children, was published in Frontiers in Immunology um, three days ago. The uh, first author is Lisa Weger and uh, as I mentioned this comes from Mark Davis's group. And um, I uh, personally, I really like this study for, uh, for a few reasons. First of all, I'm a fan of these observational immune monitoring study, studies. I think that um, a, lot of, a lot of the work out there focuses on a specific condition or a specific treatment, while we don't really understand a lot of the basics of the immune system and um, questions like, how many B cells do we expect? How many T cells do we expect in a healthy individual? Um, and then taking it a step further, how many of these do we expect in a child or in an elderly person? So um, I'm a big fan of these uh, observational immune monitoring studies. Furthermore, um, I really like the fact that this study is um, a pediatric study. Um, so uh, Peter Brodin from Karolinska Institute has some amazing studies on, on kids. And um, I'm really excited that uh, this group is looking into, uh, into children as well. And uh, a third reason I'm a fan of this is because they're looking at Bangladeshi children. And um, I think that, I don't have the numbers, but I think we can, I can safely say that over 90% of the data out there is um, in Caucasians, um, Western European descendants, etc. So um, I'm really excited to see um, a study in a, um, an underrepresented group from a developing country. Another study which I really like uh, comes from the uh, Human Immunophenotyping, Immunophenotyping Consortium. Um, it was headed by Adib Rahman. It was acquired by Adib Rahman in Mount Sinai, and this one is about uh, chikungunya uh, patients in Nicaragua. So an immune monitoring study in children comparing uh, Bangladeshi to American kids. And uh, just, just quickly surveying the, uh, the study, this is a site of study. Um, they had a, uh, a broad immune monitoring uh, panel with an emphasis on, on T cells. Um, and, um, and scrolling a bit down, um, they, they used some, uh, some novel uh, clustering method along with TSNI to analyze their data. We're going to use Astrolabe. And um, uh, the, uh, the main conclusion they have, so I mentioned that, so they have um, both stimulated and unstimulated data. Um, at the unstimulated data, uh, they see that uh, the older the kids become, the greater the differences in the immune system between the American kids and the, and the Bangladeshi ones. So for the, uh, the one-year-olds, uh, the immune system is uh, the most similar between the two groups, while for the two-year-olds and the three-year-olds, they're starting to become different. And, um, and um, the summary here is that uh, these findings suggest that Bangladeshi children has fewer uh, monocytes and they have more differentiated uh, T cell subsets compared to American children. And the older they become, uh, the more pronounced the, uh, the effect. Um, and they have some explanation here, um, which an hypothesis that makes sense. Um, there is also some additional work on, um, on um, PMA ion mycin stimulated samples, which I'm going to skip. I'm going to focus just on the unstimulated data. And uh, scrolling down um, all the way to the end, I am deeply thankful that um, that uh, Lisa Weger et al. have shared their data. So uh, the data is available on Flow repository, and um, all of the FCS files are there. I'm. I think that more researchers need to do this. Um, in all of my collaborations, I'm always intent on, on putting the data out there. Uh, Mike Leopold from Stanford is really keen on convincing people to do that. And I'm really happy that, uh, that Mark Davis and his group has put their data out there. So um, I took the data, I got it from Flow Repository, and I put it on Astrolabe. And what I'm showing you here is the experiment summary page for Astrolabe. Um, so just a, uh, an asterisk, I did not take all of the data for the purpose of this demonstration. I only took the unstimulated data. And also I didn't use any of the controls. Um, just to clarify, if you do analyze the full data set with Astrolabe, uh, we have a specific uh, quality control dashboard for controls. And, um, and you can do comparison between the unstimulated and the stimulated or within each group. So for this, 
these are only the unstimulated uh, uh, samples, no controls. These are 106 FCS files. And um, just to put things in perspective, Estrolab took 40 minutes to analyze the entire data set. So everything I'm showing you here is after 40 minutes of Estrolab, basically you put the data on Estrolab, you go have lunch, you come back, and you can start doing the things I'm showing you now. So this is the experiment summary page. We have all the FCS files, and for each one we have these different sample features. Uh, specifically the donor ID, uh, whether he or she is Bangladeshi or American. Um, then uh, the uh, Weger et al. had an age group assignment in weeks for each one of the uh, donors, each one of the uh, each one of the patients. Um, I didn't, I wasn't exactly sure how they transformed it, so I just divided by 52 and uh, rounded down to get the age in years. So 18 weeks is age zero, and 53 weeks is age one, 104 weeks is age two, and so on. We have, and we have the sex for each one. Um, I will state that these are also not all of the features that came from the study. They actually have additional features um, in flow repository. In addition to these, um, to these features, I also defined a few auxiliary features that help us with the analysis. So Bangladeshi sex allows us to compare male and female only within the Bangladeshi uh, um, individuals. American sex allows us to compare, to compare male and female only within the American individuals. Same for Bangladeshi age and American age. And finally, one-year-old, two-year-old, and three-year-old allow us to compare American and Bangladeshi within each one of the age groups. And the goal here is to some degree mimic the analysis that was done by Weger et al. So we set up the experiment design, we ask Astrolab to analyze this, and as soon as it is done, we can switch to this view called the cell subset navigator. Um, this is a composite view of the entire experiment. Everything I'm showing you here is using data from all of the FCS files. So all 106 FCS files are represented here. And the introductory view to the cell subset navigator is a visualization called the MDS map. Uh, this is similar to uh, Visni, this is similar to uh, Flowsome Trees. Um, it's a dimensionality reduction view where each one of these bubbles is a cluster of cells. And their position on the map corresponds um, to the distances between them in the high dimensional space. In other words, similar subsets are next to each other, dissimilar subsets are away from each other. And um, so these are all the clusters, and you can see that uh, from the get-go, you can communicate with the data using the kind of language that you understand. Astrolabe automatically identifies the different cell subsets based on the panel. So I didn't do any definitions here, I just dumped the FCS files. And since this is a pretty standard um, immune monitoring study, Astrolabe identified uh, the different uh, T cells and uh, B cells and myeloid compartments. So um, so we can play with this in different ways. We can color code it. So for example, here's all the T cells and here's all the B cells. But I'm going to fast forward into this tool called differential abundance analysis. And this allows us to compare the frequencies of the different subsets across uh, the, uh, the sample features that we defined beforehand. So for example, I can go here and compare the source. And what happens when I do this is the MDS map is now color-coded based on the fall change between the Bangladeshi and American sources, um, factoring in all of the patients, all of the individuals. Uh, so the deeper the color, the greater the fall change. Scrolling further down, Astrolabe is providing us with a volcano plot where each one of these dots is one of the cell subsets, and um, the x-axis is fall change, the y-axis is a measure of statistical significance, the negative log 10 of the FDR, the higher it is, the more significant the result. And just by looking at this, we can see that uh, two of the cell subsets, the classical monocytes and the intermediate monocytes, have a higher uh, full change and a higher um, FDR compared to the others. If I click on them, I can get more information. So I'm going to click on both of them. And um, scrolling down, here are the classical monocytes. And we have two visualizations here. The first one is this bar chart, where every bar is one of the uh, individuals. The y-axis is the frequency of the uh, classical monocytes, and uh, they're color-coded based on the group. So the green one are the Bangladeshi, the purple ones are the American, and we can see how the American are more or less higher than most of Bangladeshi. Um, this is uh, further quantified over here. Uh, so in this box plot, the white lines are the median, 
and we can see that the median frequency of the classical monocytes in the American population is about 5%, in the Bangladeshi is about 1%. So a five-fold increase between uh, these two groups. Scrolling further down, looking at the intermediate monocytes, uh, these are much less common, and we see about a three-fold change between the two uh, groups. They're also much more variable, uh, which is to be expected given the lower frequency. So already, Estrelay uh, has taken us through a bit of a journey where we gave it the data, um, we explained the experiment design, the same way we would communicate with the bioinformatician, and it's giving us these high-level insights, um, which really follow our research question, namely the classical monocytes, um, higher in the American population compared to the Bangladeshi. Now, can we do better than this? I mentioned before that we have these auxiliary features that allow us to compare specific age groups. So let's look just at the classical monocytes. Uh, there's a five-fold change between the American and the Bangladeshi. And let's switch between all of the patients to just the one-year-old. Scrolling down, we can see that uh, the American group is still higher, but uh, there seems to be a bit less of a difference. And a lot of it is... Um, um, is fueled by these three individuals. So there is a lot of variability between the, within the American group, um, and uh, they're still higher, but slightly less so. Let's switch to the two years, and now we see that um, there seems to be a bit more of a fall change between them. And finally, to the three years, now we're seeing about a tenfold change in frequency. So as the American population gets older, uh, sorry, as the Bangladeshi population gets older, it looks like the uh, frequency of the monocytes gets lower. We can inspect that directly. We can go here and switch to the Bangladeshi age. And once we do that, we're going to have a box plot with the different, um, with the different, sorry about that, with the different groups. So the green ones are zero, uh, less than a year, purple ones are one year, orange ones are two, yellow with three blue is 4. And you can really see how the frequency of the classical monocyte goes down in this group as time progresses. Let's compare this to the American group. Unfortunately, we don't have the 4-year-olds for the American group, uh, but the American groups also decrease, just not as uh, sharp as the Bangladeshi group. Um, and um, yeah, we can, we can continue navigating around this. Let's do one more of these exercises. Uh, the paper was discussing um, highly differentiated uh, T cells. So let's look at these effector memory uh, CD4 T cells. Um, I'm going to sort this by the source. And we can see that when examining all of the, the entire population, no age, there's, they're about the same. Uh, there's a minor increase for the Bangladeshi um, compared to the American, but not by much. Let's switch to one year of age. Um, the Bangladesh are a bit higher, but only um, a little bit. Two years. Now we see a much bigger change. There is a lot of variability in, very, in the Bangladeshi group, but looking at the median, uh, there's more than a two-fold increase in the effect of memory CD8 T cells. And finally, looking at the three-year-olds, um, there seems to be about a two-fold change between the two groups. So again, this seems to mimic the... Um, the conclusion from the paper where um, the myeloids go down as the Bangladeshi age while the, uh, the highly differentiated uh, T cells go up. And again, we can repeat this exercise by looking just at the Bangladeshi and we can see that as they get older, the frequency of the effector memory CD4 T cells goes up and compared to the Americans, uh, again, we don't have the four-year-olds, but it seems to be much more uh, consistent with the Americans. So different trends between the Bangladeshi group and the American group. One last thing I want to look at. Um, I want to look at uh, different sexes, and this is something that uh, the paper did not elaborate on as far as I could notice. So uh, let's compare the males and the females, and um, let's find some interesting subsets to look at. Let's pick these effector memory CD4 T cells and one end, and um, sure, let's look at some NK cells. We haven't looked at NK cells yet. So um, there seems to be, let's sort this by sex again, a bit of an increase in the frequency of effector memory CD4 T cells in the female group compared to the male, and um, a minor increase for the male group uh, in the NK cells. None of these are very significant, but they, it is a full change trend. 
let's see if this differs between the American and the Bangladeshi group. So for the American group, um, there seems to be a bit more of an increase in the effector memory CD4 T cells and um, about the same for the uh, NK cells. And let's switch to the Bangladeshi group. Um, not much of a trend here. So less interesting, but I'm glad that we uh, examine this hypothesis and so if anything is there. So a brief summary, um, we can play really easily with the different experimental questions here and, and very rapidly ask questions about the, uh, the different groups in the experiment. Just to put things in perspective, getting to this point took 10 minutes of my time to set up the experiment and then having a cup of coffee as Estolab analyzes this. Um, so I hope I managed to convey how friendly and accessible the interface is, um, how rapidly you can analyze, how rapidly you can generate ideas. Um, we just spent less than 10 minutes reproducing some of the main results of this paper. And I'm sure that if we dig further, we can find more ideas. And I'm sure that if we add the stimulated data, um, then we can start asking questions about that as well. So thank you for your time. And uh, please find us, astrolabediagnostics.com. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about this analysis or about our platform. Thank you and have a good day.